Hello everybody, this is John Droney, otherwise known as Goji73, and per request, this was a request, now that I'm here at GFest 20, by Chris Merjahangir, the man who asked me to make a tour video. He asked me to make another video for each and every one of you, and with me is a very, very special guest at this time, the very talented Matt Frank, who is... Sorry, I'm not taking interviews, I'm working. Yeah. Oh, hi guys! <laughs> it's an honor to meet you here. Thanks, John. Right. Now, if you don't mind, per Chris's request, I have a few questions to ask. All right. First off, how are you doing today? What do you think I'm doing? I'm doing very well, actually. I'm at G-Fest, so I'm happy. Okay. And that's, you know, otherwise. I'm just kidding. No, I'm actually, I've actually had a really good, good convention. Very good. Are you, and you probably already sort of answered this question already, but are you enjoying your stay? Have you enjoyed your stay here at G-Fest since this is Sunday by now? Oh yes, uh, G-Fest is great every year. It's uh, This is my sixth G-Fest in a row. I don't ever plan on not attending because it's just it's my personal biggest convention of the year. It's the, it, it is, it's just, uh, this is where some of my... Some of my best friends in the world come here every year, and I'm so thrilled to be able to see them, reliably see them. Just cool. You mentioned that this was your sixth convention. Which was your first G-Fest that you went to? That would be 2008. 2008 uh, was the convention where both Haruo Nakajima and uh, Don Fry were special guests that year. And that being my first G-Fest was also one of the one of the most awesome and most intense. I mean, that was where I met some of uh, most of the people that I see every day. Okay. Very nice. How would you describe the overall atmosphere of G-Fest from your past experiences? Well, um, you know, it's it's a fairly it's it's a fairly um, consistent atmosphere. You know, everybody's here at G Fest. Everybody's here for the same reason. We're all here to have fun. We're all here because we, we love and believe in the same uh, core material. You know, no matter race, creed, or color, we all love giant monsters. We're all here to have fun, and it just you know every year it seems to just. I mean, there will never be, you'll never be able to recapture that lightning in the bottle from the first G-Fest. That first exposure to G-Fest just kind of blows your mind. But that's not to say that uh, every G-Fest doesn't have certain aspects of it that make it special. Very nice. Now, is there anything you'd like to see happen in G-Fest's future, or are you happy with the way it is currently? Well, I, I, I quite like the way that it, it, it's uh, been handled. I really, honestly, I, I would like for um, I like for the staff to be able to relax a little bit. You know, they work so hard every year. Maybe I don't know. Maybe just more staff. You know, but that everybody would everybody. I mean, even though even though the, the, the show is run really efficiently and everybody does a really good job, I just, sometimes I worry about about your guys like JD and MZ. Who I'm worried I worry about them dropping dead <laughs> because they're so overworked. So uh, other than that, you know, I, there's just there's not much I would change. It'd be awesome if the G Fest became like this. Dragon Con sized event where like there were literally thousands of hundreds of thousands of people, but at the same time, it's kind of a little family. We all know each other. Everybody's everybody's in the same boat. Everybody you see your same you see friendly faces every year. So you know, I kind of like the smell of it. Very very nice. Now that the G Fest questions are done another way, how long have you been drawing Godzilla as well as the other famous giant monsters? in the giant monster genre. Well, definitely, as I'm drawing them right now, definitely one of the... I mean, I've been drawing monsters since I was a little kid. You know, I've been, been just drawing them for fun. Professionally, I've been working in the comic industry, or just just as, as a freelance illustrator for about six, seven years now. Uh, pretty much since I got out of college. I wasn't able to actually do it full time until... 2010, when I started getting consistent freelance work, and then I was actually hired to do Godzilla proper uh, in late 2010, and uh, I just haven't stopped since. Wow, amazing. Now, since, due 
With the release of Godzilla Rulers of Earth, it is now evident that you are part of IDW. So, how, if I may ask, how did you get in with IDW for the Godzilla comics? Well, um, you know, it, was, it, it took time, effort, and a lot of bodies. But no, that's not how it happened. What happened was uh, I, I I thought initially that it was all badgering and pestering because I had I had already had an established relationship with IDW before the Godzilla thing happened. I'd helped them with some Transformers books. When uh, they announced they had Godzilla, I started sending their editor in chief Chris uh, Chris Ryle uh, messages saying, "I hey, I really want to work on this. You know what a big Godzilla fan I am." And as I found out talking to Chris Mowry, who's the writer of Rulers of Earth and is also here at the convention, he told me. Something Something, whoops, <laughs> total spaz. He told me something very uh, interesting, which was they are already were planning on asking me to help out with the book. They're already planning on asking me to do work because they knew my work. I worked with them before. They were big. They they knew I was a big fan of people like my stuff. So you know, which is kind of a perfect storm. Excellent. Pure unadulterated luck. Now, with that being said, how long have you been a part of IDW? Because I noticed you were a part of the Godzilla Legends comic featuring Angiris. I first started working with IDW in 2000, late 2010 when they got the license. They uh, asked me to start doing the the, the retail incentive uh, stomp cover promotion. That was the first thing, and I've pretty much just worked consistently with them ever since. You know, the the Legends thing was something that came about thanks to. Um, uh, thanks to some some very savvy marketing by uh, for both Chris Mowry and Chris Ryle, and uh, um, I, mean, I think I meant Stomp the cover, not Legends. But Legends was um, I got that job because uh, they were so happy with how the Stomp cover promotion had come out. And since I was a big part of that, it was just you know uh, it, it was just very nice of them to want to uh, give me more of a chance than just to cover. Amazing. Yeah. I guess that also um, answers my question I was going to ask next, which was, have you had any part with the earlier series, and I believe that's what you just told me, with these covers? Well, that's, a, you know, I mean, I, I the earlier series, like, um, like uh, the Dark Horse stuff, uh, I mean, I was too young. I was, I was in grade school when those books came out, okay. so I was I was I was taking them. They was actually what inspired me to get into comics because I start I would take them to the the jungle gym when I was a kid in my backpack and I would just I would just pour through them over and over again. I still have my my, my copies from when I was a kid. They're still in the same chewed up bags that are just um, the tape is completely destroyed the lining on the bag. So but I can't I can't transfer them because it just there's so much uh, there's so much Pavlovian response to whenever I pull them out. Okay. And um, apart from Rulers of Earth, which has been your favorite entry in the entirety of every Godzilla comics by IDW? Oh, by IDW. <laughs> I was going to start going launching into the whole Marvel Godzilla comics, but we'll talk about that for another time. Um, I am a really big fan of Half Century War. I think James knocked it out of the park with that. Uh, the Legends series was a really great experiment of all of these different creators. John Lehman did a great miniseries with Gangsters and Goliaths. Met him, by the way, a few months ago. He's a really nice guy. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, and I also got to meet Phil Hester fairly recently, uh, and he's also a really sweet guy. He's, of course, did the first four issues of King of the Monsters, and uh, I, I really like the simplicity, too. So, so that's a, it's a similar, it's a similar uh, problem I have whenever somebody asks me, hey, uh, who's your favorite Godzilla monster? Uh, who's your favorite kaiju? I don't have a favorite. There are aspects of all of them that I like. Yeah, Same so thing with the IW comics. comics. Although I have to say, if I had a definitive one where I was going to hand it to somebody and say, this is the Godzilla comic you need to read, I would probably hand them half some time. Okay. And how were you chosen to do the interiors of Rulers of Earth? But I think I might have asked you that question already, or I think you might have already told me. So I'm moving on. Is there an... Oh, would you like to? Uh, well, I mean, it actually is a little complicated. Yeah. I mean, uh, I won't go too much into it, but it was really just kind of good timing because um, uh, we had been actually rolling around a couple of different miniseries ideas uh, for the, the Godzilla on, for, the, for the Godzilla series while the current ongoing was happening, and we were kind of knocking some ideas back and forth. We were just uh, we had a, a lot of different stuff. We were just we were just trying to do a miniseries. Like I wanted to do a miniseries. And uh, my editor, Bobby Kernow, was fighting really hard to let me do a, a miniseries. And finally, uh, it came to a point where 
I mean, they just decided, you know what, Chris Mowry and Matt Frank have been working with us for a really long time. They've earned their shot. So that's how we decided to go ahead and do Rules of Earth. Excellent. Now, also, is there an inspiration behind the comic book covers that you've made so far? Oh, gosh. Uh, it's kind of a, casting a bit of a wide net. I mean, for, like for the, for the portrait covers, I wanted to kind of... Uh, give the sense of, um, the portrait cover of King of Monsters, I wanted to give a sense of, you know, just these, it looked like these portraits, these really cool, very artistic portraits, um, that could be, could be collectible for people, that people would be able to, to collect and, and have the whole run, and, you know, the extra incentive, you know, extra, makes good business sense, and really, ultimately, it was, it was Chris Ryle's idea, or it was Mallory's, <laughs> uh, Ryle, Ryle was giving me most of my marching orders back when I first started, but, uh, yeah, and then just, it just, it really, I just try to push the coolest thing I can think of at the time, whenever I'm working on a cover, um, you know, and things like composition, uh, sometimes come secondary, because I think sometimes sometimes some of my compositions on some of these covers aren't as good as they could be but I still try to push and I try to whenever I come up with a, try to come up with a pose or something I always try to make, make sure is there something extra some extra little push I can, I can give this to push this pose and make this a little more interesting okay um winding down on the few on just a few more questions sure um because Rulers of Earth is only just starting off, I could understand if you don't want to share any of this information, but if you are willing to divulge only like a pinch of information, is there any sort of news you can share with us about Rulers of Earth? Or would well, you prefer to be quiet about that? No, I like, to, I like talking about Rulers of Earth. I think it's my big book after all. The, the one, th one of the major things I will say, and this is our big announcement, is that we have been approved for eight issues. Initially, we were worried that we were only going to end it at five because there was some confusion in the um, in the IDW offices about how many issues we were actually going to be doing. So they went ahead and approved us for eight issues, which is really nice. Uh, and we have um, we've got some really uh, we've got to, we were getting some great help from from Jeff Zorno, who's a who's a uh, um, another amazing Godzilla artist who's also sitting over there, and uh, he's going to be helping out a little more substantially than he has in the past. So uh, those are the two big things I'd like to mention. Excellent. And this is a question that the requester of this movie asks. Oh, How does it feel going from being a fan of Godzilla to actually drawing official comics about him? Oh, it's a legitimate question. <laughs> I thought he was going to mess with me. Um, you know what? It really is one of those things where my love and appreciation for the franchise has only gotten stronger. But it's interesting seeing it from a different perspective. But you see it from a business perspective as opposed to just being a fan. When you're a fan, you really all you have to do is just kind of all you're getting is the product. So you, you, can, you can be privy to insider information and stuff about how things are made. But when you're a professional and you're kind of on the ground floor of the stuff, you really get a sense about of, of the reason why they do make the decisions they make, <laughs> when they make them, and why they make them. So it honestly gets easier to swallow stuff. It, it, it's easier to swallow when, say, uh, you think that maybe a bad decision or poor decision is being made. You know that it's being made for a very particular reason. Whereas the good decisions being made, they can take credit for it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, it's really it, it's a shift in perspective, is what it is. You have a new, uh, different uh, appreciation for the franchise. Amazing. And this just about wraps up our interview. But there is one last thing I would like to ask. Okay. I bought this at my local comic book store, and I was wondering if you could autograph it. Gosh, I don't know. I do not know. Sure. Uh, I, I would be more than happy to. Let's get a little... Do -ba -do -ba -do. Do -ba -do -ba -do. That looks like my name. Sure. And that's, a, that's G Fest 20, 20th anniversary of G Fest. And uh, do a little something here for you. That. All these pens. Just, all these pens and pencils. Make them all go away. Awesome. Yes. 
This is going to be a little hard to see, but using the goal pens will stand out. There you go. You can kind of make it out. Careful. It's uh, going to have to dry. Okay. This is it, people. This is Rulers of Earth made by the ever-talented Matt Frank. Make sure to pick up your copy if you ever see it at your local comic book store. You will not regret it. It is a masterpiece. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir.